hello everyone welcome back to the new video today in this video we'll be talking about this paper which is titled as contrastive chain of thought prompting it's from researchers from alibaba group singapore technical university and nayang technical university so the idea of this paper is inspired by how humans actually learn which is you got to see both positive and negative examples to make out what works and what doesn't work because knowing what doesn't work also gives you a hint of like you should never be going on to that path so with that crux let's move on to first understand the lineage of how this prompting has evolved and what are we even talking about in this paper so they have a beautiful figure that have created which is this one where they tell about three aspects one is standard prompting then chain of thought and then the contrastive chain of thought which is the main agenda of this paper so let's look into what is standard prompting so the idea is like you ask a certain question to your large language model and you directly given the answer and then you ask another question and now is what you expect your lm to give you the correct answer so now this is an example of one shot standard prompting because you have given one example you have set the expectation to your lm and now once you ask the similar question you're expecting lm to give you the answer that says something like this so this is standard prompting so this method worked pretty well for tasks that were quite deterministic but for the cases where you have reasoning involved such as solving a mathematical expression or solving questions like these right so these are again you need to understand what's happening and accordingly add those values to get to the final answer so there is a chain of thought that you have to put in to get to the final answer by deriving values based on the intermediate calculations that you do so that's what people then tested out which was chain of thought wherein if i give you this question and i also give explanation to the llm in terms of how you should be thinking rather than just giving bluntly the answer value with proper justification if i write my language along with the facts and then i get to the final answer people saw this method to tremendously improve upon standard prompting when it comes to to solve reasoning based questions and now once you write down the question the model starts off by explaining each of its intermediate outputs step by step to how it got to that and eventually using all the intermediate derived values it will get to the final answer which is in most of the cases correct when compared to standard prompting but in this paper researchers improve further upon chain of thought and say as humans also learn by giving positive and negative examples you should be knowing what works and what doesn't work what if we give lms the same scenario and see if we get something better than chain of thought so that's in where this experiment of contrastive chain of thought came into play where again the idea as i said is you given the question you give two explanation in this case where the first one is the correct one second one is the wrong one so the examples are contrastive within themselves and then when you ask the final question the model gave a correct response by going through how that intermediate values and how the chaining of those intermediate values is to be done correctly so this is how the prompting has evolved so now with this a natural question comes in like what are these wrong explanations is there a variety in terms of what kind of wrong explanations we can give because for positive example it is pretty clear right whatever gets to the answer logically and that makes sense that's a positive example but you can derive negative examples in multiple fashion you can have wrong numbers put in place you can change the order in which you are doing the calculation you can not even talk about the problem that you're trying to solve you talk about something totally different so all these are variety of negative explanations that you can give to your model but what's the impact of each of them and all those questions is what these authors have analyzed in this paper so for that they have defined components of chain of thought so what they say a usual chain of thought has these two components one is bridging objects second is language template where bridging objects is nothing but items arithmetic equations tasks all of that that the model traverses from starting to end to get to the final answer if the example that you're trying to solve for is this one lee had 32 chocolates and her sister had 42 if they ate 35 how many pieces do they have left in total so what do you see in blue is basically the bridging objects wherein you have certain values that you need to somehow use as you progress from top left to right bottom to get to your final answer which is 39 and the second aspect what they have said is language templates 
which are nothing but textual hints that guide the language model to derive, contextualize the correct bridging objects during the reasoning process. So those are nothing but the language which are marked in green that fill in the surrounding context around these blue objects so that the bridging objects are contextualized. For example, I said after 1835, which as a part of the model would understand it's a negative sign along with the bridging object of 35 because after eating is a negative connotation. So those are the two aspects or the components that the authors have written down or broken chain of thought into. With that, now we talk about what is an invalid chain of thought? How do you exactly define it? So there are two components. One is coherence. Another one is relevance. So the idea of coherence is that there should be a correct ordering in the terms of rationale that you're putting down for giving it to your LLM to understand how the answer is to be derived. But if that order isn't followed, for example, if something that is finally derived as a part of T plus fifth step, you are using that value at T plus one step, then this referencing of future elements into the past is not a coherent thing, right? Because ideally you should be referencing this in your final calculation that happens at some later time. So that's the idea of coherence. And the second one is relevance. Wherein the idea is that the rationale that you're trying to give is relevant to the question that was asked for. So for example, if you said like a person named Lee was eating chocolates, if that's something that's written in the question and the argument or the rationale that you give as a part of thought process to your LLM is that there was a person cutting hair. So that's clearly not at all relevant to the question that was asked for, right? The elements have changed, the context has changed. So that's again kind of a negative sample that you can give to your system. So using some form of relevance and coherence, they derive five kind of negative styles that you can portray. The first is invalid reasoning, incoherent objects, incoherent language, irrelevant objects and irrelevant language. So let's read through some of them. So for example, irrelevant language. So we were talking about Lay having 32 chocolates and her sister had 42, but clearly the language and all of that is really irrelevant, right? That's being used. So that's an example of irrelevant language because the entities have changed, the context around that has changed and all of that has happened. However, if you see, right, the answer for that is still 39, which was the actual answer over here. And for that matter, 39 for all of them almost, just not for this one. But still, these are negative examples because how the rational has been constructed is really not calculated correctly or it's totally irrelevant like we saw in the last one. Feel free to pause over here and read through all the other examples. So this first column is for arithmetic reasoning and similarly for factual reasoning, you have tampering that was made. Cool. So now let's see through the impact of each of them when comparing against standard chain of thought. Yeah, sure. So what they've written is across these two data sets and these are the average scores. The standard, which is giving input and directly writing out the answer as an output had these numbers. Chain of thought had much, much better numbers, but chain of thought with either of these five styles had even better numbers. So you can see right from 69 to VR, in 75 to 80 range with any of the methods that you use. Similarly on this data sets and also on average, you are improving five points easily with, with just one kind of negative example, when the winner being incoherent object. So yeah, that's a good boost and it clearly demonstrates that contrastive chain of thought can be thought of as a general enhancement of chain of thought prompting, wherein it gives extra edge for the model to also learn from how it should not be thinking for which you give negative examples. So that's pretty much for this paper. I hope you learned something new. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye, take care and have a good sleep.